Hey everyone, today I'm thrilled to share my very first full edit using TK9, the powerful new plugin for Photoshop. We're taking on the challenge of enhancing an image featuring the striking badlands of Death Valley. Join me as we navigate the tools and techniques of TK9 and see the step-by-step -step process unfold. Let's jump right in. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday and I have another image by Andres Juliao. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, this is of the Badlands in Death Valley. I'm starting out here in Lightroom. We're taking TK9 out for a spin today. It's going to be a full edit. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can use my promo code DK15, which normally gives you 15% off. But now through the end of August 31st, 2023, that DK15 will get you 25% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. I highly recommend that you pick up Sean's new button by button training video. It goes over TK9 in great detail, button by button. Lots of great information. I highly recommend it. When you use my promo code DK15, you're helping to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. When you use that code, I do make a small commission, and this helps me to keep these videos coming to you each and every week. And thank you all out there for using my promo code DK15. Thank you very much. Hey, also, before I start, don't forget you can download the PDF notes. It'll take you step by step through my entire TK9 process here. And don't forget to also download the image as well. You can download this image and follow along with me. This is a great way of learning. Now we're going to be starting out here in Lightroom first. And let me show you what I've done. The first thing I did was did a crop. I'll show you. Here's my crop on the image. Just did a little bit of a crop. And then um, I used a linear profile. I always like to start out with a linear profile if I can. Gives me a nice starting point. Makes the image nice and flat. Low contrast. A good starting point, in my opinion, for the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. And then uh, I just basically click on auto. And, and then usually I'll just touch up my white and black point a little bit. I don't add any texture or clarity or dehazing here. A little bit of vibrance. And then under lens corrections, I always uh, check on remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. And that's basically it. No noise reduction. This was shot at ISO 50. Oh, and I almost forgot. I did do a little bit of uh, temperature adjustment. I just warmed it up slightly. That's all I did. And at that point, I just do a right click and go to edit in and click on edit in Photoshop 2023. But I'm already there and I'll see you there right now. All right, we're here in Photoshop. Now, the first thing I want to do is set myself up for success. And what I mean by that is I just want to save out some masks. Now, I know I want to work on the foreground separately from the sky, but I have two parts of foreground. I'm calling this the foreground, this area right in here. And then I'm calling this area it back here like the middle foreground. It's probably not really the middle foreground, but that's what I'm calling it. And this is the sky, but it's in the middle. So that's why I'm calling it middle. Before I save the first mask as a channel, you'll notice I have some channels down in here, masks saved as channels. And the reason they're there is when I was working this edit out there there. So I want to get rid of these. So if you ever want to get rid of any channels down here in your channels, like any alpha channels, channels that you've made, all you need to do is click this button on the combo panel or this button right here in the CX panel. It's in brown and it's a trash can. And when you click it, it'll get rid of all the channels. So that's a nice little tip for you. Now let's go ahead and make some channels. Now, TK9 makes it really easy to save out channels now. Now, I want to save out the sky. So what I'm going to do, here is the sky button right here in the combo panel. I'm going to hold my command or control key down. That's the secret. Hold command or control down and click on the sky and check it out. It saves out that sky as a channel. That's all you have to do. Now, right now, I'm going to go ahead and deselect that by clicking this button right here because I got to save out this foreground area right here. And to do that, I'm going to grab the object selection tool and I have it set up for rectangle sample all there. So all I'm going to do is drag right around here and it's going to select that area right there. You see that? And now I'm going to use this button like we used to use on TK8 to save out a 
mask as a channel and what we'll do is we'll just type foreground here and we'll simply click OK and now that's saved out. Now I want to select this area right in here so I'm just going to grab this area right like this and now it selects that and now we'll click this same button and save it out and I'm just going to call this middle foreground and we'll just click OK. So now I have sky foreground and middle foreground and I call that setting myself up for success. Now I'm just going to deselect that selection. Now we're going to do some balance and contrast adjustments. I'm going to start out with this front area here that I'm calling foreground. So what we want to do is click on the luminosity mask button and I want to get a midtones three. So we're going to click on this button here and I want to use it to protect the shadows and the highlights, the darkest shadows and the lightest highlights from clipping. It just protects me. That's all I use it for. And we'll output this to a color grading tool. Now we can do some balance and contrast. And I want to start with this area right here. So we're going to come to the combo mask calculator, or you can use the CX mask calculator. I'll be using the combo mask calculator. So I'll click this button right here and I want the foreground. So I'm going to click on that. Now I need to get it into here. In other words, what I need to do is intersect it right now. If I would just apply it, you would, you'll notice here. If we look at this mask, see, I don't have that midtones three anymore. So let me click this button again and let me go back a step. And now we have that midtones three right there. So let's click on the mask calculator. What we need to do is intersect it. Okay. Now watch what happens when I click the X for intersect. Whoops. And you'll notice, and I'll leave this mistake in. It says no channel mask chosen. Just click OK because you have to click this button first foreground. So I want to work in the foreground, this area right in here. So we'll click X now and you can see it intersects. So if I click the double arrow, you can see there's that intersection. Pretty nice. Click this button again and now we can color grade it. So I'll start out with shadows. I'll click on the shadow button. And according to my notes, I took this back to a minus 23, which is right here. And then I went to midtone. So click on the midtone button. And I took this one to the right to lighten up the midtones to like a plus 25 right there. And then I did a little warm color grade. Now I'm going to click like right here. It was somewhere right around here, but to make it consistent with the notes, if I click right in this area right here, this is a hex code. And I could copy the hex code from my notes, which is 90806E. And if you click this button, you'll apply that color grade. And now I'm going to go to highlights. So click on the highlight button. And this one, I just opened up the highlights to a plus 24 right there. So here's my before and here's the after just getting this area here. Next, I want to work on this area. The color grading tool is covering up the multi mask panel. So just click this X. Nothing changes here. And again, we're going to get a luminosity mask. Again, a midtones three to protect highlights and shadows from clipping. I'll put it to a color grading tool. And now let's come back to the mask calculator. So I'll click this button right here. And this time I'm going to work in this area. I'm calling it the middle foreground. So we'll click this. And again, another intersection. So click on X to intersect. And there you can see if I click the double arrow there, you can see that intersection. Click the double arrow again. We can see the image again. And now we can do the color grade. So I'll start out with shadows. So click on the shadow button. And I just want to darken those up a little bit. So I went back to like a minus 15. Now we'll go to midtone. So click on the midtone button. And I just pulled those back a little bit to a minus five. And I did a little cool color toning. So into the blue here like right around this area, but I'll get the number off my notes. So I'm going to click here and type that number in, which is 68687C and I'll click this button and there's that color grade. And now I'll click on highlights and I open those up a little bit to a plus 25. Now here's the before and here's the after. And now for the sky, we don't want to leave it left out. So let's click the X to get rid of the color grading tool. Go back and click on the luminosity mask button again, midtones three, and then we're going to output it to a color grading tool. And then we want to go back to the mask calculator. So I'm clicking this button on the combo panel. This time I want the sky and another intersection. So click the X to intersect. And there we can see when I click on the double arrow, there's the sky intersected right there. Pretty cool. And now for some color grading. I'm just going to work on midtones and highlights. So I'll click on midtones, the midtone button. 
And I want to darken up the sky, so I'm going to pull this back to a minus 30 just to darken it up a bit. And now we'll click on highlights, the highlight button. I want to open that up. So like a 27, which is right here. And now I want to do a little bit of a magenta color grade. So, you know, I click somewhere right around in here to add a little bit of magenta in that area. But I'll click this field and type in the hex code from the notes. And that was E6A1DC and click this button right here. And there's that actual color grade from the notes. Now here's the before on the sky and here is the after. And then we have the overall before button and after button, which is right here. So click this. This is how we started and now we're here. And now I want to do a global balance and contrast over the entire image. Now I need to get to my multi-mass panel, so click this X. Again, nothing changes here. This time I'm going to use a different approach. Instead of using a luminosity mask button, I'm going to click this button here for a blend if generated mask. And I want a midtones 3 again. But check this out. This is something different. I'm going to hold my shift key down and click on the color grading tool. And that will apply blend if. You can see by that symbol, blend if. And if I double click here, you can see there's that blend diff for midtones three. I'm just going to click cancel applied to this layer and it's global. So I want to do it over the entire image. I don't need a mass calculator. I'll start out with shadow. So click on the shadow button. I'm not going to do any color grading here, but just adjusting the shadows, midtones and highlights, the luminosity values. So I'm going to take the shadow and drag it to the left to like a minus 16 right there. And then I'll go to midtones and just open them up slightly to like right here, a plus nine. And then we'll go to highlights. I'll click on the highlight button and I'll take this up to 36, which is going to be right here. Okay, here's the before and here's the after. So that looks nice. I add a little bit more contrast, but here's the reason I chose blend diff. I'm going to X out of here. And now I'm going to click this button right here. So this will let me adjust the blend diff on the layer. And all I want to do is tighten this up a little bit. I'm going to take this shadow slider here on the left bottom and drag it over to like right about there just to protect those darker shadows. So right about there and then the highlights. I'm just going to pull this in a little bit more to right about here. Okay, so here's my before and here's my after. So. With that button, I'm going to X out here. With this button right here, we can adjust blend diff on any layer that we want. So again, here's my before and here's my after. And the overall before by clicking this button on the combo panel and here's the overall after. And you'll find that same button on the CX panel as well. Let me show you something. Let's click on this blend diff button again. You see this button here where it says gray. If you want to see what the result would look like without blend diff, click this check. That'll uncheck it. This is what it looks like without blend diff. This is what it looks like with blend diff. Now let me shut that off and we'll go to the global color grading layer. And this is what it looks like without any color grading. And this is what it looks like with, and this is what it looks like with blend diff protection right there. And now we can X out of here. I just wanted to point that out. It's important to understand how that works. All right, what's next? Now, when I study this image, you see this little area right down here. It's a little bit light, so I'm thinking I can darken that up a bit. And to do that, I'm going to grab an object selection tool. Now, I'm still in rectangle. I have sample alerts checked, hard edge. And I'll just drag around this area here and see if Photoshop, yeah, it finds it really nicely. And then what I'm going to do is use a color grading tool to adjust it. So, what we're going to do is click on this button right here. And when I do, I have to click plus because I have a color grading tool already already here. This was the global adjustment. I have to click plus to add another color grading tool and you can see the mask right there. So if I click this button there, you can see in white the area that I have selected. And now we want to use the color grading tool. We'll start by darkening the shadows, click on the shadow button and we'll drag this over to the left to like right around here, minus 17. And now we're going to click on the midtone button. And I'm going to darken it with midtones as well. So I'm going to take that over to like right here, minus 14. Here's the before and here's the after. And then I want to slightly warm it up just a tiny wee bit. So I'm just going to click right here. I'm not going to bother by typing in the code. But as you can see, that warms it up. Here's the before and here's the after. So pretty cool. 
It just keeps our eye from going down there. So when this is shut off, we tend to want to look down here. And now with it being a little darker, that keeps us away from there. The next thing I want to do is burn down some of the darker tones in this foreground area right here. But I don't want to get this area here or this area back here. So let me show you what we can do here. Let me X out of the color grading tool. I'm going to click on this button right here for blend if mass generation. Now I want to target dark tones. So here's a darks one. Here's a darks two. I'm trying to narrow down the range. The light areas will get most of the adjustment. Here's darks three and here is darks four. This is targeting the areas that I want pretty well. And now I want to output this to a curves adjustment layer but I don't want to output it as a mask. So I'll hold my shift key down and click on the curves adjustment. And now that applies it as blend diff right there. You see that if I double click, you can see there's the adjustment for blend diff targeting those dark tones, darks four, click cancel. And now I want to put this in the multiply blend mode. So I'm going to click this button on my combo panel. And now you can see all the dark areas in the image got darker. So here's the before and here's the after, but it's got all up into here which I don't want. So I'll show you how I can take care of that. But before I do that, I'm going to go back and click this button to adjust the layer blend if. So click this. And what I want to do is narrow this range down a little bit. And to do that, I'm just going to take this slider right here and drag it a little bit more to the left, just tightening up that range to maybe right about there. And now I want to grab my object selection tool. And you notice right now, if I show you the before, I'll shut this layer off. You can see it's getting this area and I don't want it. So I'm going to use the object selection tool to grab that area right there. Okay. You see how I grabbed that. And now I'm going to go to the mask calculator on the combo panel and that's an active selection. So let's click on active selection and we will subtract that from the mask. You see how it subtracted it, but we're also getting some back in here too. That's getting a little bit on the dark side. So, I also need to remove that area from the mask. I can get rid of the selection just by clicking this button right here and that's gone, but it's still on my mask right here. And if I click this button, you can see it right there, right? We're going to go back to the mask calculator on the combo panel, or you could get it on the CX panel. It doesn't matter. So click this. And now I want to click on middle foreground, which is this area up in here. And I want to subtract it. Okay, so now you notice it's subtracted too. So now when I shut this on and off, it's only affecting this area in here. You see that? Here's the before and here is the after. Now I think the effect is too strong. So I'm going to pull back on this layer opacity, but I want to show you something else. You see this double arrow right here in pink? If I click this, you can see the areas, right, that I've selected right there. And if you adjust these sliders, you can see what's happening when I adjust them. You can see the areas that I'm targeting, see how I'm getting it very narrow here. So that's very helpful, but I want to be right around in this area right here. And then don't forget to click this because there's an overlay in that layer right there. So when you click this, you shut that overlay off, but here is the before and here is the after just darkening up these areas up in here. Now, as I said, I think it's a little too dark. So I'm just going to take this opacity and drag it back to like somewhere right about here. So here's the before and here's the after, but it's just darkening down those areas, burning down the darker tones. Well, what's next? Well, when I study this image, I feel that this blue back here in this middle foreground that I'm calling middle foreground is a little too blue. So I like to tone that down. So what I'll do is X out of edit blend if so we can see the multi mask panel again. And then let's simply click on a hue saturation adjustment layer. And there you can see it right there. Now remember, I set myself up for success at the beginning of this edit. So I have this middle foreground area saved out as a channel. Click on the mask calculator and let's grab that middle foreground. We can click this button to apply it right to the layer. So click that and there it is applied. And now it's a simple matter of pulling back on the saturation. So I'm just going to take that saturation back to right there. Minus 13. Here's the before and here's the after. So just tone it down a little bit. And now what should we do next? Well, I think we can add a little bit of clarity to these rocks and let's see what we can do. We have an action. So let me click on TK actions 
and you're going to find your clarity action right here. So we're going to click on clarity and a high pass filter comes up and we can adjust it. I think it's too strong. So I'm going to pull this back to like on my notes, I have like a 6.8, you know, I experiment and I thought that was good and click. Okay. Now it's over the entire image, which is okay, but I would like the effect to be a little more subtle. So what I can do is target a tonal range. And I think I'm going to target the dark tonal range. And to do that, I'm going to use a new feature of TK9, and that is this button right here, which will give me layer blend diff. So let's click on it. And the beautiful thing about this is we could sample out different tonal ranges here. Like we could see, like, what does it look like on lights one? So I can click right here and we can see it's really weak. We could try like midtones three. There you can see it's a little stronger. And let me do this. Let me go ahead and really zoom into the image. I'm just clicking this plus. I'm going to click it a few times so we can really dig into this. So right now I'm in midtones three. So here's the before and here is the after. Okay, so we can also try these zones. Like we could try the midtone zone right here and see what it looks like. We can try the dark zone, zone two right here. Okay, so that's not as strong. Here's the before and here's the after, but we could see it there. It's a little weaker. But what I finally decided on was like darks too. Let me click on darks too. So here's darks too. So here is the before, as you can see it here, and here is the after. Can you see it? Now, maybe I'll go with darks one. I think darks one will be a little bit stronger. Here is the before and here's the after. Yeah, before and after. I hope you can see that in the video. Sometimes the YouTube compression, you don't see it as much, but I can definitely see it there. And now if we want to go back to full screen, we can click this button right here. But let me do a before and after here. You may or may not see it. I do record these videos in 4K, so you might. So here's the before and here's after. But that really gives me some nice sharpening effect using that 6.8 high pass setting. Now, as I further study the image, I feel this area right here is a little too light drawing my eye too much and right down in here. So I'd like to just tone it down just a little wee bit. And to do that, I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. I'm only using it for a multiply blend mode, but I'm going to put a black mask on it first by clicking this button and clicking this button for multiply to put a multiply blend mode on there. And then I think I can target this with the zone mask. So let's click on the zone mask button. And I'm going to click like right around here. I think that'll hit the tonal range I want. And we can see that's like at a 154. I'd like to tighten this up a little bit. And so I can drag this slider into the left to somewhere, maybe right about here. And now we can output this to a black mask painting with a white brush, just like I done before in TK8. Very similar. I mean, it's the same thing, really. And now with a brush at like 10% opacity, right now my brush is at 20%. I'll type my one key. That'll get me 10%. Now I'm painting through a selection. So I'm going to get a brush about this size. And just I just want to start, start to darken some of these areas down. I'm just painting it on wherever I think it should be. And I could go over several times and it'll build that up slowly. And I'll just tone this down a little bit down in here. You see? Just like that, just so I can train the eye, not right here, but all around this area right here. So I just want to, you know, just tone it down just a little wee bit, maybe over in here a little more in here. I don't know, but just play around with it and take your time. But I think that's pretty good. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. See how that just tones that down? Very nice. We're nearing the end of the edit. When I get this far along, I like to try the color luminosity action, which is right here. So we're going to click on that. Now, I recommend that you do this. This was set up by Tony to whenever you shut this on and off, you don't see any change in your image. So I recommend that you do this. You want to save this setting out as a preset, just in case you screw up these adjustments and you want to reset it back to the starting point that Tony set up for you. So what you need to do is come up here. I call this a hamburger menu. Click on this and click save black and white preset. It'll open up your file browser. Tell it where you want it to put it. But you'll notice I have one in here called color loom starting point. 
Just give it a name. Type a name in here. Tell the browser where you want it to be stored and click save. Okay, I'm just going to click cancel because you'll notice I already have one saved. If I click on preset, you'll notice I have one here called color loom starting point. So right now, if I click reset, it'll reset it back to Photoshop setting, which is not Tony setting. But if I come back up here and click the default drop down and click on color loom starting point, I set it back to Tony setting. Very important. Just in case you mess it up, you can always go back. It's a good little tip and do it. You'll be glad you did in case you ever need it. Okay, well, let's make an adjustment. I want to darken my reds, so I'm going to take my reds and pull those back. See how the reds are getting darker? And I ended up with like a minus 13. Next, I'll move to yellows. And right now, yellows are at 89. I'm going to pull those back a little bit. And I think I'm going to go to like right here. There are no greens, so I didn't mess with the greens. There are some cyans, and I took my cyans back. A good bit to like a minus 28, I believe it was, right about here. And then the blues I took back just a little wee bit to like a 9, I believe it was, right there. And magentas, I darkened up the magentas to like a 15, right about here. Well, it's 17. Let's get 15, Dave, right there. So here's the before and here's the after. Doesn't that look cool? I love this color luminosity. It's only affecting the luminosity ranges of these colors right here. The next thing I want to do is bring out some contrast in the midtones only. And I believe I saw this from a video Sean Pagshaw made years and years ago. So what I'm going to do is get a luminosity mask. So click on the luminosity mask button. Get a mid-tones one. I'll put that to a curves adjustment layer. And what I want to do here is just grab a preset. Under presets, now I'm targeting mid-tones one. So it's a very subtle adjustment. Click the presets and you're going to find a preset called strong contrast. Click on that. And that adds a very strong curve, contrast curve, just to the mid-tones. Check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. Just building up some extra contrast which I think these Badlands need a little extra contrast there. And now, as I look in this area, I think that blue saturation is a little bit too strong, so I can come back to that layer where I originally pulled back the saturation and click on it. And I'm going to take the saturation and pull it back even more. And I'm going to take it back to like a... I decided on... I, th I think I was around like a minus 18, minus 19 just to tone that down just a little bit. Now let's go back and click on the top of the layer stack. I went ahead and zoomed way into this image because there's a cloud right here and I don't really like it right here. And over here, here's another cloud. And I think I can get rid of those with a remove tool. So I'm just gonna use my remove tool. And what I need to do is get a blank pixel layer above here. So if we click this button right here, we can put a blank pixel layer above here. And with that remove tool, and mine is set to sample all layers and remove after each stroke. I'm going to make the tool a little smaller. And I'm just going to paint over this area right here. And I think it'll clean this up fairly well. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. You can go over it a couple times if you feel you need to. You just want it to look believable. I'm doing a fast job, but I think that looks fine there. But take your time. Here's even a little cloud up here I can get rid of. And I'm just going to paint along this area right through here like that and see if I can just clean up that edge there. Yeah, and I think that looks good. I just wanted to clean that up. And now let me go ahead and click this button and zoom back to full screen. And yeah, so here, if you look back in here, here's the before and here's the after. So I think that is gonna be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. That's something you can leave or take away. It's totally up to you. And now I wanna throw a vignette on the image. It's going to be a TK action, so you can click this TK button here, or if you have two panels out and your actions are staying open, I'm just clicking regular vignette, so I'll just click vignette, and I always take the Gaussian blur the way it is and click OK. Uh, the action now, instead of defaulting at 50%, defaults at 30%, but here's something really nice you can do to protect your deepest shadows. Instead of double-clicking here and getting blend if and making adjustments, we can click Cancel. All you need to do is click this button for Layer Blend Diff. And if you click this button, No Darks 1 or No Darks 2, I usually like No Darks 1. Click this, and it protects Darks 1. 
You can see right in this edge here, Darks 1 will not be getting the adjustment. And if you look at the image, and if I uncheck the gray, which effectively shuts off Blend If, let me turn this opacity up to 50, just so you can really see what's happening here. Okay, that's close enough, 51%. So watch the dark areas. Right now, I'm protecting those dark areas. If I uncheck this, this is without Blend If. See how we can see the dark areas are getting crushed? Now when I check gray back on again, you can see now Blend If is protecting those areas. So that's pretty cool. But I'm going to go ahead and take this opacity back down to, you know, I don't know, like 34. That's pretty good. Here's before and here's after. But that's a quick and easy way. Just click this No Darks 1 button, and then you can readjust these if you need to. Now I'll just X out of Blend If, and I have one more step, and that is to increase the overall global contrast. To do that, I'm just going to grab a color grading tool. I'm not using any masks. And you can see here, this is a curves adjustment, a color grading tool, right? It's simply a curves adjustment, but the color grading tool makes it so much easier to use. Basically, what I'm doing is setting a white and black point. If you look at the left side where shadows are and the right side where highlights are, I'm going to click on the shadow button and all I want to do is drag this to the left till this slides right over and touches the edge. And that basically will set like the black point. You see that moving over just till it touches that edge. Okay, so that's my black point. And now I'm going to click on the highlight slider and then move it to the right till this slides over to the left and touches that edge. So watch, I'm just going to pull that just till it touches that edge right there. Now here's the before and here's the after, but see how that just increased the overall contrast and I like it. Now, if you feel there's too much saturation there, now I really like it, but if you felt there was too much saturation, what you could do is you could X out of the color grading tool and then you could come up and click this button for a saturation vibrance mask. And what you can do is it defaults it saturation one so just leave it there and then just output that to a hue saturation adjustment and then you'll find a drop down see where it says master click here and then you have all your different colors here and then you could pull saturations back or bring saturations up for all the different colors you can target them individually i feel i like my saturation so i didn't do anything but i have this information in your notes in case you need to do this Okay, we're finished now. Let me see where we've come from. So let's click the before after button. Here's the before. The image started out looking like this, and now it looks like this. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you enjoyed this full edit today with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and don't forget to click all. That means every time a new tutorial comes out, you'll get all notifications and you won't miss a tutorial. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.